really got me. I tried to start... God damn it, I'm trying to talk here. I, I tried to... That's the problem, I thought last time, uh, you told me not to... I thought you were look, telling me not to say anything. Look, dog, I'm trying to help these guys out here. I'm trying to give them information about the Academy. I'm trying to tell them about the most prestigious worldwide Academy on the internet today. Man I know, Academy. I don't want to be part of it. Well, we're part of it right now, we're recording, so let's fucking get on task here. Okay. Look, you are drowning in a sea of bullshit. You're on prescription meds, you're a neurotic, nervous, anxious guy. A lot of porn. A lot of porn. A lot of porn. You have a, a whole... Stabbing. You got a Anime hard drive. porn, uh, you know, Anime. Chinese or black guy, anything. Tentacle porn, furry porn, you got a whole... <laughs> you got porn. You got five terabytes, all of porn. And that's, that's just a lot your, of fucking porn. That's just your porn. That's a lot of fucking porn you got there. Now look, we're not telling you to get rid of that porn, but we're telling you that porn is a problem, just like Handy Joyballs' motherfucking mic if he doesn't mute it. Mute that fucking mic. Mute your mic. What an asshole. Son. I, I gotta apologize to everybody now, because this guy's fucking up the podcast. God damn it, Andy. Alright, take three. Okay, so, you got a lot of porn, you got terabytes of porn on your hard drive, and, uh, you're like, why... What am I doing with my life? I'm beating off. I'm playing uh, Call of Duty, Dota. Buying a lot of Abercrombie clothes, trying to look cool all the time. I'm still on video games. I'm playing Halo. What kind of oh, hipster? Vi- what kind of hipster video games do you play? What's that one where you Minecraft? Dota two, Dota. And we already said Dota. Farmville, Farmville. Farmville. Oh uh, yeah, if you're a chick, you're on, you're on yeah, Facebook playing like, Farmville. I've been playing um, uh, Flappy Bird. Fla- 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 Flappy Bird. I hate Flappy Bird. Okay, you could be playing Flappy Bird. You're definitely playing. That might be okay. Look, you're definitely playing Candy Crush. And uh, that other farm game. Where you have to get the little fruits. You're definitely uh, playing those games. Ninja Mask. Wait, what's it? No. Uh, n- Fruit Ninja. You're, you're definitely playing Fruit Ninja. Look, the point is, you're playing a lot of fucking video games. We're here to get you out of that funk. Because all those activities, whether you realize it or not, are designed to form relationships. You want meaningful relationships with other people. You want hoes you can fuck. You want a girl you can fall in love with. You want... A girl you can come home to, get your dick sucked, get a nice meal made for you, get a back rub, have somebody to talk to. You want companionship. You want to talk about all the people you see in the world, your thoughts on school, on work, society. You might want to fucking cuddle. I want to cuddle with a hoe. So uh, you have needs. You definitely have needs. You have sexual needs. You want to put it in multiple holes on her body. So Some we, people want two. Others might want three. Look, don't but get greedy. The point is, the point is not how many chicks you're banging. If you're, you think you're a player and you're trying to hit as many chicks as possible. By hit, I mean tag. By tag, I mean hump. By hump, I mean fuck. But the point fuck, is, fuck, I mean smash. Yeah, okay, if you're from, you know, if you're in front of the Jersey Store, you're, you might have a yeah, smash you might, room. You might say smash. Look, the point is, you're trying to make relationships. You want meaningful relationships. Eventually, even the most seasoned player. Look, I've banged more chicks than uh, than there are sands on the beach. But even I. As a guy who's fucked many chicks, wants one girl to settle down. I want one girl to understand me. I want some companionship. I want to be with that one chick and say, look, what kind of waffles are we getting this morning? I want to have those kinds of conversations. The bullshit conversations and the intimate, tender, soft conversations. You know where you talk about the moles on her body and you're trying to connect the dots? Those type of things. <laughs> that sounds a little gross to me. Okay, but... shut the fuck up. Nobody asked your opinion. Right. Look, also... You want to form relationships with bros. I know you're thinking, look, that sounds kind of gay. But you're in America. You're in the place that is so, everybody is so worried about putting their arm around a bro, about high-fiving him too hard, about accidentally hitting him on the ass. About yeah. hugging him with two arms. Hug. Hugging him with yeah. two arms, making out with him in a movie. You know, just stuff like, look, I went too far. But the, po- the, the point is, you're worried about showing affection to a bro. That is natural. That is normal. In Korea... Bros walk arm in arm down the street. You don't do South that South Korea. Not South North Korea. Korea. Not North Korea. But in South Korea, bros walk arm in arm down the street. That's how affectionate they are. That's how good they are with touching each other in a non-sexual way to show, hey, bro, I like you. Just like when you're tackling a guy, you got him in a headlock, you're hugging him, you enjoy being around him, you grab him by the shoulders, you try to choke him out. Whatever you're doing, the point is you're showing affection to your bro. 
that's the kind of relationship like, you want. like how kids do it on the playground. Yeah, you know, the kids on the playground, they don't stand three feet away and worry that their hands are rubbing together and they're, you know, they're fags. They, look, they say, look, bro, I like you. They, they shake hands. They wrestle each other. That's what guys want. Even grown-up guys, they want that affection. They need that affection. That's a requirement in your life to have that type of relationship where you can touch a bro in a non-sexual way and say, this is just my bro. This is a guy who's my buddy, who uh, I share adventures with. I open up to about girls, my relationships. I'm accountable to my thoughts and my feelings with this guy. He knows what I'm really thinking and what I'm really feeling. This is the kind of relationship you want. I'm not talking about the new age chakra ridden Deepak Chopra, uh, Tony Robbins, where you're jerking off to uh, how many sunsets you've watched and how many times you declared a positive affirmation in the morning. We're not talking about that faggot bullshit. We're talking about a relationship where you can depend on the bro and you can open up to the bro. And I mean, by open up, I mean you can be accountable. You can tell him, this is my real thought. This is how I really feel about this situation. Those are the type of relationships you want. You don't have them. We're here to cut through all that bullshit. Well, oh, nobody has my back once again. Fuck me. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Just like you guys... I'm not accountable to my thoughts. That means that I don't really want to share what I really think. I don't want people to judge me. I don't give myself permission to say what I'm thinking. So I understand it. But so this that, place is going to teach you how to be accountable. That's why you're here. Your this is one of the students. That's why I'm here. You're going to meet Dick Van Dyke. He's one of the students at Manhood Academy. Look, whether you're going on your first date, you're creating friendships with your classmates, you're, uh, you're trying to save a troubled marriage, you are the guy who ha- had sex on the first uh, couple of dates and now you're in a marriage that's sexless. It's emotionless. You're you're sleeping in separate beds. You kiss each other on the cheek. You can't wait to get to your computer to jerk off. That's the type of marriage you have. We're going to save you from that bullshit. We're going to teach you how to get your dick wet. Even when you're married to a girl and you see her repeatedly day in and day out. We're going to teach you how to create an, a relationship that you look forward to seeing the other person versus just tolerating the other person like a lot of people in their relationships. We're gonna. Exactly. We're even going to teach you how to deal with your girlfriend when she's being a bitch or your wife when she's acting like a cunt. We're going to teach you how to direct her, how to tell her, yes, do this, and no, don't do this. When you're you want to bring stability to your life. You shouldn't have to drive home after work and worry, is your wife going to be kind to you or is she going to nag you? It shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't have to live walking on eggshells like most guys. Not to mention dealing with an unreasonable single mother or any... A uh, domineering mom who is just emotionally uh, unstable and can be the sweetest person, but at the drop of the hat, she turns in the Incredible Hulk and just goes insane. We're going to teach you how to deal with bitches like that and bitch behavior in general. Look, even, this even applies to business relationships, motivating your employees' uh, f- uh, classroom f- friendships. We're going to teach you how to meet guys in class, in the classes you're in. We're going to teach you how to talk to your coworkers. Any situation you can think of, whether you're going out to a bar, a club, your neighbor. We're going to teach you how to form the type of relationship you want with those types of people in your life, whoever you come into. You're not going to learn how to form relationships in these different situations. We're going to teach you how to form a relationship from the ground up. So regardless of whether you're talking to the mailman, you're talking to your spouse, you're talking to your girlfriend, you're talking to a guy you just met, we're going to teach you how to to be accountable to your thoughts and feelings with that guy so that, or with that girl so that at the end what will happen is there will be a spontaneous relationship forming just because you're doing the things necessary to get the relationship off the ground. Yes. Uh, like a pickup artist community will teach you. They'll try to tell you how to speak to someone in a bar or at a party. But, but that's not going to work in class. That's not going to work in a different situation. The principles taught here will apply everywhere. Yeah, that's the good news about principles. Uh, they govern the universe. Uh, the limitations you see in physics are the same limitations that work across all disciplines and especially social interactions, a.k.a. relationships. Those same yes. principles like entropy, gravity, all those things that you know in the physical universe also apply in the psychological universe of relationships. So you're going to learn that relationships aren't these unique snowflakes that you just can't get a hold of and everybody's different and you can't say anything definitive we're going to cure you of that hipster faggot liberal bullshit and we're going to teach you that relationships have definite principles that limit them and guide them and if you restrict yourself according to these principles you will be able to get into relationships before what you th- you thought were uh, 
either with people who are out of your league, you're too neurotic, you're too shy, somebody taught you some bullshit like you're an introvert, you're ISTPN, whatever that uh, Myers-Briggs bullshit test is. Uh, you, you ever heard that, oh, I'm an introvert and I just get drained when I'm around people, I need to recharge, I need to be alone by myself. That's all fucking bullshit. No such thing. We're going to get you off the Adderall. We're going to get you off the... ADHD, ADD, all that. The ADHD medication. We're going to get you off the uh, the Tums. We're going to get you off the Pepto-Bismol. We're going to get you off the Flintstones chewables. <laughs> They're pretty good, though. Yeah, they are fucking great, but we're going to get you off of them. Look, we don't want you medicating yourself with, uh, you gotta, you got to blaze out. you got to smoke some weed. you got to drink just to socialize, to take the edge off. No, that is masking a problem. You're a neurotic fag. You're, you're a people pleaser. You're always worried about what other people are thinking about you, and you don't give yourself permission to express what you're really thinking and really feeling. We're going to cut through all that bullshit. A lot of you guys think that they need to drink, have a few drinks, have a few beers to get uh, to get tipsy, to get drunk, to get buzzed, so you can be social. That's not what being social is. Yes, a beer or two can make you uh, lose your inhibitions. You're not as neurotic. You're not thinking so much in your own head. But uh, then the next also, morning, you're fucked because you're no longer buzzed, and you go back, right back to your neurotic self. You yeah, what stretch do you do that, at work? You stretch that rubber band, and then it snapped right back into the neurotic place. What are you going to do at work exactly? What, what are you going to do with your wife? What are you going to do when you're at lunch? Oh, hold, you, hold, hold on, honey. Drunk? Hold on, honey. I'm going to go hit the Jack Daniels so I can talk to you, so I can socialize with you. Not going to happen. Not practical. Listen, right now, you can rely on principles regarding math. I can ask you what 2 plus 2 equals, and you'll tell me it's 4 every time. You can rely on the principle of gravity. If we're standing at the end of a cliff, you can know for certain that if I push you, you will fall. Don't push you. You can rely on these principles. And guess what? There are principles to relationships as well. Right. And you'll learn them here at the Academy. We created this Academy just for neurotic fags like you. Out in cyberspace, guys on 4chan, uh, guys who are... Reddit. On Reddit. We created it for hipster faggots just like you. Uh, white knights, manginas, guys who are running into the rescue, the nice guys who are always there for the girl at 3 a.m. to uh, get her up 7-up uh, when she's uh, she's got a tummy ache, and then she tells you about all the guys she's fucking. We're there for you, fags. We're gonna. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I'm not good enough. I'm not. Uh, I'm not good looking enough. I'm not rich enough. Uh, I don't drive a Ferrari. This won't work for me. Wrong. If Look, you know, I'm a burn here. victim. If Go you ahead. saw the left side of my face, you would see it looks like a a, a burnt hot dog. If a burnt hot disgusting. dog looking guy, a disgusting, vomitous, burnt hot dog looking guy, can get a hot chick, can make relationships with bros, you can do it too. Yeah, yeah. and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a geek, I'm a nerd, uh, I study all the time in the library, and even I can form relationships, even I can get laid. That should give you hope. If, look, if a faggy guy like this in college can get laid, you can get laid. If a faggy guy like this who was, uh, who was shut and locked in a locker by his roommate first year of college, if he could cry his tears of sorrow and self-pity out and then turn his life around so that now he can actually talk to people and people will actually be affected by what he says. They'll actually be governed by what he says. They'll actually want to talk to him again. You can do it too. You might think that the creator of this academy, the professor here, he always grew up like this. Who knows? But I can tell you from, from my own standpoint, a student here who didn't create this place, that being introverted, being a beta guy, all these things I used to think, being a shy guy, that was just a bad condition I was in. And here, you'll learn how to get into a condition where you can lead relationships with others. We're going to dispel so many myths. Uh, look, look, I'm going to go through just a short list of faggot myths that you'll uh, see and hear throughout your life. Uh, this guy responded to some thread. He got a lot of chick advice. Chick advice is the worst advice you could get for relationships. What I learned, be polite. Okay, uh, that's just a slight tip. Don't punch anybody in the face when you're socializing. Eh, that's fine. Okay, number two. Um, she brought up a topic she knows about. Don't try and outsmart her. What? What kind of neurotic... What does that mean? Uh, it, neurotic faggotry. You're thinking, oh, this conversation is a ticking time bomb, and i got to cut the red wire or the blue wire. No. We're going to teach you how to approach a relationship the right way. You're not, you're, you're not strategizing your head. What's the next thing to say? Oh, I'm running out of things to say. I better come up with three topics uh, before I talk to her. You know, that worked in seventh grade. When I was in seventh grade as a nervous fag, I would write topics down to talk about before I called this girl I like. I'd write them on a cue card. And this guy is still doing that today. Don't try to outsmart her on her topics. Fuck off with that nonsense. You yeah, are, beyond that, 
you shouldn't have to bend over backwards whenever anyone, especially a girl, brings up a topic. You shouldn't have to be like, oh, shit, I don't know what to say about this. I don't know what to talk about, how to respond. I don't want to blow it. To govern the relationship. I don't want to blow should it. You talk about what you want. You shouldn't have to be like, oh, shit, she's talking about painting your fingernails. I have to respond to that. Holy uh, shit. The next up. Uh, Useless platitude. You are not your car, guitar, or paycheck. Yeah, thanks for that uh, rousing piece of advice. Nobody fucking cares about these useless, vague platitudes. You might as well tell people, uh, be yourself, be confident. Totally fucking useless. We're going to teach you how to get specific, how to get accountable, how to do things in a specific way where they have a specific result, not general things like, uh, just do it, bro. Uh, Reach for the stars. That's why we get you on video cam. We have every student here needs a mic. Because we'll see your condition. We'll be able to tell you specifically what's wrong and what you need to do instead. So you don't have to rely on bullshit advice. You're not your paycheck. You're not this. But what am I? What exactly do I need to do? You'll learn it. Right. Okay. Um, next one. Feminiz- feminism is better than misogyny. Oh, God. This guy's a total fucking faggot. Feminism is not better than misogyny. Feminism translates into uh, special rights for women under the pretense of equal rights. Feminism is better than misogyny. These are just as fucked. Uh, Misogyny is the hatred of women. Uh, It's saying that equal rights is better than the hatred of women. You are going to learn these faggot hipster phrases that are just going to make you miserable. There's there's so many problems with the sentiment. There's so many problems with feminism. There's so many problems with guys who are just catering and deferring to women left and right, and he thinks this is equality. Is equality cowering before women? Is equality paying for every date? Is equality... Uh, holding the door open. The selective service. Well, mm. women don't have to. Is equality uh, doing more uh, work than a chick, working longer hours in more dangerous, more demanding jobs? Is that equality? No. In your hipster faggot mind, that's equality. So we're gonna we're gonna rid you of that bullshit notion. We're gonna teach you how to get your balls back. We're gonna teach you how to stand up for yourself. We're gonna teach you what true equality is. It's not equality of things that you're doing. You don't need to lift an equal amount of weight to be equal. You don't need to lift an equal amount, uh, or you don't need to uh, solve an equal number of math problems to be equal. Uh, You don't need to eat the same amount of food to be equal. Equality comes from uh, worth as persons. We're going to teach you the difference between being a functional man and an equal man. You are not equal in function. You have different functions as a guy. You do things differently. You have different responsibilities as a guy. You're smarter than a woman. You're stronger than a woman. You should be in charge of a woman. You guys who think that equality is, honey, you lead and I lead, you are the guys who end up getting dumped, who end up in the friend zone, who end up lonely and miserable, who are sexually frustrated. You are the guys who are chronically stuck beating off to porn. We're going to help you out there. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna eradicate that mindset and we're going to teach you what it is like, what it's like to give yourself permission to exist, not to be begging for women to shape you, to to give you your identity. Your identity is no longer going to be based on women. You're going to have your own male identity, and you're not going to be asking for fucking permission to say it, to have it, to be it. Uh, once that happens, girls will be attracted to you. The, uh, it's so ironic that once you start having your own identity, that's when women are attracted. Yeah. Unlike most guys who you cater to every whim, and they're the ones that aren't attracted to women. They're the guys that girls cheat on all the time. Yeah, I just got to find that rare blue rose on top of Mount Everest, and I'll pick that for you, and then you'll love me. Fuck off. Okay, number five. If you know nothing about the topic you're talking about, let her know. Ask her about, and be interested. Appear interested. Again, another faggot strategy. Fake it. Say lie. Appear yeah, interested. Lie, lie to her. Yeah, lie to her so that you uh, tell her the things you hope she wants to hear. It basically, he's telling you, become a neurotic faggot around her. Walk on eggshells around her. Uh, f- uh, fake interest in her. Be so nervous around her that you're worried about offending her. This is this is the type of guy who is begging to get into a relationship. This is the worst advice possible. Especially, it's sad that a faggot like this is giving relationship advice out. A guy who has no experience talking to women, very little sexual experience, uh, very little friendship experience, forming friendships with other guys, and he's giving this faggot advice out. Utter nonsense. Utter hypocrisy. Offer to pay once. After that... Offer to go Dutch. If she denies that, then let her pay because she wants to. Well, who? Where do you get these faggot rules? You've been reading Cosmo. You've been watching TMZ. Knock off the faggotry. You've been raised by a woman to think like a woman. There's no rhyme or reason to these rules. You are just a pussy. 
You are worried about what women think. You are crawling on your belly, deferring and catering to their every whim, and you think that's the way to win women? You're insane. The fact that you're lonely and miserable and beating off every day should be evidence to you that it's not working. Your nice guy faggot attitude doesn't work. It's not only hypocritical, it's silly. It's impractical. It's wishful thinking. In these Don't drive days, yourself crazy look, if you're thinking, I have to get one drink for this girl and then I have to pay for one date. It's too much to worry about. These faggot, strategies, on your attitude. Look, these faggot strategies are developed in the vacuum of your own Dungeons & Dragons mind. It would be one thing if you developed these strategies based on actual social interactions you had, relationships, past relationships you had. This is all based in theory. This is all utter faggot nonsense. It's imaginary make-believe for nerds. It doesn't work. We're going to teach you what actually works. You're going to hear me talking to girls live. I'm going to invite girls to the class. You're going to see what works firsthand, not faggot conjecture and bullshit like this. Number seven, she is interesting and you are interested. Act like it. <laughs> Act. Act. Once again, Why? be a phony faggot motherfucker. You want to end up uh, with uh, dating your hand, married to your hand your entire life? Listen to this fucking faggot. Okay, number eight. Sex is secondary unless she initiates. They aren't jealous of past con. What? <laughs> He's basically telling you, uh, deny your own male sexuality. Deny your own necessities. Don't worry about sex. Just uh, worry about sex and the city. Worry about uh, reading the magazine she she reads. Worry yeah, about... she's allowed to initiate. Yeah, she You're is in not. control of the sex. You're not allowed to say that you have any sexual desires or sexual needs. Fuck this faggot. I want to punch this faggot in his clitoris. Uh, number nine. You aren't a gorilla. Quit beating your chest and having a dick-sized competition with every guy there. Uh, okay. This is another hipster faggot. This guy is probably 60 pounds soaking wet. Uh, he's just, Again, he's fantasizing about relationships. Yeah, we're not telling you to join the football team and become a bodybuilder and take steroids. That's not our point here. But it's also not to fucking fantasize like a shut-in and, and uh, pretend that this advice, is actually, this advice is actually valid. This is your neurotic fantasy life. This is Facebook. This is you texting people. This is not real life. Knock the bullshit off. Number 10. Women talking bad about other women is reserved for women only. And the ones that do that are probably bitches. Probably. Again, letting you know, this guy has no fucking experience with women. You do it. You There's look no just standard. as... You do it. You look just as bad as the girl. You are bad-mouthing. Did I miss anything? Yeah, you missed a lot of things. Number one, you missed your balls. You're a fucking faggot. Uh, I, I am too frustrated even reading this. Look, come to the academy. Try it out. You could pay. It's a... Uh, it's $21 a month to enroll for the month. That works out to like 66 cents a day. If you can't afford that, if you're a homeless guy, you get a free scholarship. We're giving away free scholarships. Our goal is not to scan you out of your money. We will address any critic anytime, anywhere. We hold live if debates. You live, if you live in a poor country, it could be even cheaper. Look, God damn it. Uh, we hold live debates regularly because we put our work out there for, crit uh, for public scrutiny to prove that what we're saying is true. We're willing to give you a free scholarship just to get you on board here, just to get you socializing, just to get you into relationships. That's how important this is to us. It's not a money-making scam. We challenge any faggot critic out there to come make that accusation to our face. Prove it. Our ebook is free. We'll talk to you. We have a chat room. We'll talk to you for free. You, if, you can't afford the, if you can't afford the academy, we'll give you a free scholarship. It's on our dime. Fuck all the faggot critics who say we're a money-making scam. We dare you to make that accusation to our faces. We're here to help guys like you who are neurotic faggots doling out this neurotic faggot nonsensical imaginary unicorn uh, fluffy furry porn ridden uh, my little pony advice. We're here to cut through that bullshit and give you what actually works and we're willing to test it. We're willing to test our work. We're willing to have the criticism and to answer our critics. No other academy, no other institution, no other school, no other pickup artist forum, no other self-help guru will make the same claim and dare answer the critics the way we do consistently on a daily basis. You and can't find we want to see them. We dare you. Bring them to us. We challenge you. Find the guys that do what we do. Find the guys who are running a business, a group, a social club, whatever, that is designed to give you relationships or teach you how to form relationships Bring them to us. We dare you to find them. They're not there. We've checked. We've looked. They don't exist. We're the only ones in existence that have this type of program, that have this type of 
social knowledge that have this type of experience and are willing to risk it and put it on the line in front of our critics day in and day out. This is Manhood Academy. Okay, don't say goodbye. Goodbye. Say goodbye.